I'm going to show you one of my favorite core exercises, the side bridge. I like it because it can address your shoulder, your core, and your hips on one exercise. For and it doesn't require any equipment. So let's jump right into it. Now, for the setup, I'm going to show you a lot of uh, common mistakes uh, that people do too, so you can watch out for yourself uh, while you're doing this at home. Now, to start off with, you want to be on your side, of course, but always make sure your elbow is underneath your shoulder and your knees are stacked so that when you look down, your heels align with your buttocks. The cue number one, imagine you have a knife here, you're trying to push yourself away from the knife. Most common mistake people do, they just slouch into it, okay? Or they just hang out like this, don't want that. So push yourself away, getting nice and tall. The other part you want to have is, think about the help with this, think about make a fist, and try to really reach the fist up toward the ceiling. So that way, you can really get this engaged. Now, if you have a partner, have that person stand behind you and have the person feel for your shoulder blade to make sure that shoulder blade part is not sticking out when you're doing this. And the shoulder blade we're talking about is the shoulder blade at the bottom part, okay? Now, this is only a setup, okay? And for those of you who have shoulder pain, this is a good way to build up some rotator cuff endurance, you know, so you can just hang out in here. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Now, for my neck pain patients, when you do this, you may feel some tension at the upper part of the neck. That's normal. We're going to have another exercise to show for that. But the easiest way to bypass this is to get your nose point all the way down toward the floor. You're going to feel some relief here. Okay, so that's only the setup. And uh, for those whose shoulders can tolerate this, no problem, we're going to move on to the next one, which is the up part. After you set this up properly, we're going to get the pelvis off the ground. So make sure you roll forward just a little bit to put some weight in the down knee and using your elbow and your knee to push the pelvis off the ground. Next progression, bring the pelvis forward. So I'm going to change angle just a little bit so you can see me better. Now from here, up and forward. Now common mistake here, most people just go right, right from here. So we intentionally to slow this step down so that you can truly find out where your hip hinge is. Now this is the part that I like about the side bridge because it can teach a lot of things. Now while we maintain that quote unquote shoulder tensions, okay, that work at the shoulder. We can use that to teach the hip hinge. So for those of you who have low back pain, you can really use this exercise to learn again how to bend at the hip, not at the low back. And also, as you do so, you can have that side core engagement. You know, we get that really core stabilized while you did that hip hinge. So for those uh, patients who experience, you know, pain with the twisting, this is a good way to do so as well. Okay, now try to do this as long as you can. And usually we like to start off with about 30 seconds. And since you have multiple, you're tasking multiple muscles here, so you may want to give it a full rest. And the recommendation here is however long you can hold. Give it, if you're a beginner too, give it like almost double the time for rest. The goal here is doing the second and third or fourth rep of this, you're trying to go in with basically fresh muscle with every rep. So you're getting the full, you know, say 30 seconds on the whole four reps. And especially if you're a beginner, you can really get the most out of your muscles that way. Once you get up here, the progression is to see if you can maintain this posture and rotate your chest and your belly button to the ground at the same time. The rotation happens in the shoulder and you'll be pivoting on the down knee joint. Again, key here, can you make sure the chest and belly button turn at the same time? Common mistakes here, most people when they rotate, they will bend at the hip to have that quote unquote rotations, or they end up twisting the upper back only then. So those are things to watch for. Side bridge, once you find it easier, and to define easy, if you can 
do the last progressions for about 90 seconds and you can still have this talking uh, you know talking rate meaning you can easily have carry conversations and you can do it three times in a row on each side you know you basically pass it you can move on to a little bit more aggressive or more uh, challenging core exercise I emphasize a lot with my patients on understanding the why of doing an exercise and when you get that knowledge it will be pretty liberating uh, and you can be pretty creative on creating exercise now going back to the side bridge why I like about this is because you can use it as an upper body exercise now for my neck pain patient simply have them hold in this position that worked the neck quite a bit and we talk about posture having them to know where the set up the line is or meaning you know what a good posture feels like with the neck that goes a long way because most folks when they do this exercise the common mistake is having here or they arch too far back so even having a little nuances like this to teach them how to do things properly uh, to us that's always important on you know working the motor control because exercise is more than just working with the muscles especially what we call it more like a, a beginner level exercise like this we really try to teach our patients again how things are moving together and what a you know what is moving and what's a proper form and especially hopefully they can develop that kinematic sense so hopefully those tips help you and I will look forward to seeing you again next time.